Hey there, on this week's episode of Golden Key Design, I'm gonna show you how I installed this heated floor. Let's get to it. So for this installation, I'm going to be using the Schluter Dietra heat kit. This comes with everything that you'll need and costs only about $500 for the entire kit. The first step is installing the Dietra heat uncoupling membrane. These are these big orange mats and that's what will go onto the subfloor and then you can attach your tile directly to the top of it. The key feature of this membrane is that unlike Duroc, it uncouples the subfloor from your tile install and that way if your subfloor moves, your tile won't move and it won't be prone to cracking or the grout having to crack as well. Also, these Dietra heat mats have the studs on top which allow the heating cable to sit inside of nice and secure and that way it's not moving all over the place while you install your tile. The way you install these is by using the Schluter All Set or you can use any unmodified mortar and you're going to first burn it into the plywood by using the flat side of the trowel and then you can come back with the groove side to create those grooves and then you can put the membrane on top of that. And you're going to want to apply pressure to make sure it fully sinks all those ridges by using a float or you can just use your body weight and just kind of walk over the mat like I did. All right, it's now time to start laying out our heating cable. It's designed to go perfectly in between each of these studs so it's held down in place. There are a few rules to keep in mind. You wanna stay about seven studs away from your toilet flange as you don't want it to melt the wax ring. You also wanna stay about four studs away from an HVAC vent so that it's not overheating that area. And also you don't wanna use it in dead space where people won't be walking. For instance, if you have a vanity that's sitting on the floor, it doesn't make sense to heat underneath that. So the cable is a specific length and you can't cross over itself. So you have to be kind of careful how you lay it out and make sure that you use all of it and use it in the right areas. So it might take some trial and error, but let's get started. So you can use your hand to apply the heating cable into the Dietra heat mat and it'll kind of just pop into place as you see I did there. Some people like to use a float to kind of push it in, but I found using my fingers actually worked best. Another tip is that when you lay out your Dietra heat mat, you want all the studs to line up with one another from one mat to the next. That way when you lay out your heating cable, it doesn't have to make a zigzag across the pattern, it can just go straight across. And as I mentioned before, these cables come at a specific length and you can't extend it or shorten it in any way, so you have to plan ahead and make sure you get the right size heating cable for your space. Schluter does have a calculator on their website that allows you to help calculate what cable would work best for your bathroom or for your bedroom or wherever you're heating the floor. However, I would err on the side of caution and always probably get the smaller cable as opposed to the larger one if you're debating between two sizes. And at this point I realized I had made a mistake in my layout of the cable, but it was easy enough just to pull it right back up. And I didn't have too much to pull up as the mistake was only one row back. However, this took about five minutes to pull up and then reapply it. However, with other heating cables, these might already be glued or nailed down and it's gonna be a lot more work to readjust the cable. So for reasons like that, I really like this heating cable as it's pretty DIY friendly. Also, I realized I had some mortar here that was stuck in the studs, so I just used my utility knife just to pick it out and make sure that the heating cable was still flush with the very top of the studs. And as you can see, I'm leaving three studs in between each row of cable. This is the minimum recommended distance by Schluter. And at this point, I stopped just to reassess as I had about a quarter of the cable left and I wanted to make sure I used it in the right spaces. I was actually most concerned about the toilet because as I mentioned before, you can actually melt the wax ring if the cable gets too close to it. So I wanted to stay far enough away from that happening, but also I wanted to stay close enough so that when you're sitting on the throne, both of your feet are nice and toasty. But I think I was able to achieve that in the end and that bottom section of the screen on the bottom right, no one's really gonna step there so I wasn't too worried about that particular area but all in all I think I got the perfect length cable and was able to cover all of the bathroom that I wanted to with the heating element and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now let's get to tiling. I've already done a two-part video series on tiling the entire first floor of this lake house project so if you want a little bit more detail on the process please go ahead and check out that video I'll link it up in the top right hand corner uh, but here's a pretty cool shot of cutting out the toilet flange. After knocking those off by hand, I came back with the angle grinder to clean up the edge, however the toilet ended up covering up most of this cut anyway. Then I went ahead and pre-cut all of my tiles. I basically dry fit them in the room and I find that this is the best workflow to make sure that everything's already ready to go when you mix up your mortar and you're not waiting on cutting tiles while your mortar starts to dry out. Then once all of those were cut, we could finally get to actually mixing up that mortar and start to lay tile. As you can see, I am burning that Schluter All Set into the Dietra Heat, filling in all those gaps and basically getting a flat surface. Then I came back and added some mortar on top of that to then create the grooved surface to then lay the tile on. Here you want to be a little bit careful as you don't want to damage the heating cable with your trowel as it potentially could cut through the cable. I was pretty much just using my trowel as normal and I didn't have any problems, so as long as you're not extremely aggressive, I don't foresee it being a problem for you. 
And as you can see here, I'm cleaning up all that mortar on the underside of those tiles as at this point I wanted to move to the left side of the room and stop going down onto the right. And you just want to make sure you clean up all that mortar if you are going to stop in a particular area because you don't want it to build up and harden and then when you go to lay your tile down the line, it'll cause a lot more problems. So just a heads up there. I'm also probably going to get a lot of comments on why I didn't use levelers here. I normally do use levelers, but with this particular tile, I found that it was just easiest to do by hand and by eye, and I got pretty good results, so I don't think levelers are needed in every case. Sometimes with wall tile, it's a little bit more needed, but with this floor tile, it wasn't too bad. Now the heating kit comes with two temperature sensors. As you can see, there's one on the left there, that black wire. You want to put that in the middle of your row so it's getting an average temperature of the heat around it. And this is what helps to signify whether the floor needs to be heated or needs to be turned off. And here we realized that we put the wrong tile down, so I just was able to pull it back up. Luckily we found it pretty quickly while the mortar was still wet. Put it in its right position over on the right hand side, cleaned up the mortar and went back to the left. So even if you pre-cut all your tiles and lay them out perfectly, you are going to make mistakes and they're pretty much inevitable. Everyone makes them, so you're not alone. And when it comes to the electrical side of this install, I'm not going to cover it in too much detail as you're probably going to want to hire a licensed electrician to do that. However, in generally speaking, basically you're going to feed the ends of the heating cable up the wall into a single gang electrical box. From there, you'll connect it to the included thermostat and then give it some power. And it's pretty much a plug and play from there. Also, I opted for the Wi-Fi thermostat, so I'll be able to adjust the temperature from my phone as well. Once all the spacers were removed, we could then start grouting. I made sure to wet the surface and then we could apply our black grout in this case. It's common to see white grout with this sort of tile, but I think the black came out really nice as well. If you want to learn a lot more about the grinding process, I'm going to refer you again back to my other videos which I've covered in a lot more detail. I'll link those again in the top right hand corner because in this video we're going to cover it kind of briefly. After letting the grout dry, we could then clean it with a sponge, and here I'm actually showing you the shower pan as opposed to the floor tile because I don't have a shot of me actually cleaning the floor tile, so you're going to get a sneak peek at next week's video. We're going to actually be covering all the tile work in the entire shower, but here you're just going to see the pan, so you get a little sneak peek uh, for making it this far into the video. Once that was clean, we could then install the HVAC vent, and then I also installed the thermostat into the single gang outlet as I mentioned before. And I just wanted to show you guys a couple of the features of this thermostat. As you can see, it provides a lot of information on this main screen. It shows you the current temperature, and you can increase that temperature directly from this screen. And if you have the Wi-Fi compatible one, you can also do the same thing on your phone as well as all these other features. You can then adjust that temperature from here for a few hours or a few days, or you can actually set it up on a schedule. So let's say you wake up at the same time Monday through Friday, the floor will turn on at that exact time. And then let's say you take a nightly shower, so you can turn it on at that time as well. And Saturdays and Sundays are different, so you can turn it on at a different time because you wake up a little bit later. Basically what I'm trying to say is there's endless possibilities with the schedule and that way you can just set it and forget it, which is really nice. And that's going to be a wrap on this week's project. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something along the way. Honestly, doing a heated floor for the very first time was a bit daunting and I wasn't sure how it was all going to pan out, but the Schluter system made it a lot easier and I think anyone with a DIY background could accomplish this project without nearly as many headaches as you might think. I was also really happy to get away without having to use a threshold as the bathroom and hall tile were at the exact same height. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And also please subscribe if you haven't already as we're going to continue more with this bathroom innovation series. Next week, as I mentioned, we're going to be covering all the tiling in the entire shower. So it's going to be quite fun. So get subscribed and stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.